So I would like to welcome um, Professor Dieter to lead into the discussion. And then I hope you guys have a wonderful time. And from now on, Dr. Dieter will take care of you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome um, to the Entrepreneurship Center of the Asian Institute of Technology. And uh, welcome to our panel discussion on uh, the topic, you know, the bright side and the dark side of artificial intelligence. And for this panel discussion, we have invited two experts who worked on AI for many, many years. And uh, one of our experts representing the bright side and the other expert is representing the dark side. So with this, I wish to invite our uh, panel member, Professor Matthew Daly, who will represent the bright side of artificial intelligence. Please, Matthew. Okay, thank you, Dieter. And uh, also, I want to invite. Yeah. Yes. And next, I want to invite uh, Professor Dung representing the dark side of artificial intelligence. Welcome, Professor Dong. So um, let's start with a, a short introduction of our two uh, panelists. Maybe Professor Matthew, can I ask you first to, to uh, talk a little bit about your work uh, and your experience and um, projects you have in artificial intelligence? Yeah, so, um, so I'm here uh, representing the Artificial Intelligence Center at AIT. So at the AI Center at AIT, we spend a lot of time in communicating with industry and coming up with solutions to problems that they face that can be solved using artificial intelligence technologies. So examples would be involving use of computer vision to automate uh, various processes in terms of perceiving what's going on in the environment or interpreting natural language. Or, um, or, or looking at looking at structured data coming from a business, and then turning that raw data into information that can then be used for optimized decision making. So we work in areas like healthcare. We work in areas such as uh, energy, environment, um, and uh, just uh, business intelligence. Thank you, Matthew. So uh, yeah, Professor Dong, can you give a short introduction about yourself and your work uh, in AI? Uh, okay, so maybe I can. Uh... Uh, AI cannot uh, cannot kill the coronavirus, so let me try to keep my uh, mask on. Uh, all right, so uh, I have been working in AI for many decades now, and uh, you can uh, imagine that, uh, let's say, it's, uh, 25, 30 years ago, if you work in AI, then uh, you basically have to be a dreamer. Eh? Uh, <laughs> and you dream about a better future, but you also dream about nightmare. Right? So what is going to be? Right? Uh, so my work is very much about uh, uh, what AI could lead to, what we can do with AI. Uh, it's by it, eh? and then um, uh, and very of course uh, um, I was always very pessimistic about AI, right, eh? but of course uh, um, I was surprised that uh, people like Professor really show up with so much positive results. So I'm quite happy about that, right? But it doesn't change, doesn't change that I am quite pessimistic about AI. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I mean that. Um, yes, we are doing. Is it a bit like we got uh, we got something uh, that uh, that helped, but uh, that lead to a slippery road, eh? slippery road, and um, we don't know the end of it, and the end of it could be out of control. Yes. Okay. Right, so that is. Uh, so um, that dream, to a certain uh, extent, has become the truth today. So and we have. Um, High promises in artificial intelligence, you know, to help uh, humankind uh, improve the quality of life and our uh, work. So, uh, what is the big thing in AI and how it can help us, Professor Messi? Okay. Yeah. I, I, as I see, as I see AI and its uh, its applicability today, it's all, all the advances that we're seeing today are involving the application of learning patterns from large data sets and then putting those those patterns to use in making informed decisions right so that and that that uh, applies to just about any 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 area right and yeah it's true that you could use that capability to learn to do 
uh, good things that have social good social impact or uh, on the other side so but but the, the the main thing is just about improved methods for acquiring data and then improved uh, methods for processing those data and making informed decisions so how it will help us um, the ordinary people okay so the I mean there, there's so much to say here that uh, I mean it's almost uh, I could go on for hours about it right but um, take take a take a simple uh, a simple air, a simple recent uh, event in the news such as in in the area of energy right so I'm, I'm an American and uh, the big thing in the news this past couple of weeks has been the the energy blackout in Texas due to due to uh, you know big storms right so one of the one of the things that we learned uh, in this in this uh, in this disaster was that uh, okay? Why why are the windmills in uh, Texas breaking down while the windmills in uh, in in New York State right uh, uh, working perfectly fine despite uh, you know uh, really really cold bitter winter temperatures right? And so the the difference is that well the the, the wind turbines that are being used in the north for many years and across Europe and other places as well. They use artificial intelligence technologies to do things such as just detect patterns of when there's ice building up on the blade, right? Then that means it's time to stop the blade and turn on the heaters, melt off the ice, and then you can continue to generate energy. So this is just one example where a, a, a breakdown or a lack of useful intelligence has now caused millions of people to be out of power uh, and uh, in kind of a desperate situation. Uh, for, 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 for weeks, right? So, so just the, the, the smallest application of technology can make a, make a real impact and, and, and have, a, have a lot of effect on, on people's lives. So will AI outsmart us? <laughs> okay, will AI outsmart us? Uh, I, 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 believe, I do believe it's possible. So, um, so I would not, I would not uh, want to downplay the, the risks of, uh, of artificial intelligence eventually exceeding our own uh, intelligence. And, uh, and uh, there's always a possibility that, that some uh, artificial agent will, will make slaves of us. But I, I do think that that, that uh, kind of uh, fear, even though it, it, may, it may be relevant in the future, it's, 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 not, it's not a clear and present danger at the current time. So right now we have a lot of benefits that we can extract from artificial intelligence technologies. And so we need, we need to make use of those technologies to, to make people's lives better now. But of course we need to uh, be aware of the risks in the future. Yes, thank you. So as every new technology, there are, there are positive aspects, but there's also risk. So for artificial intelligence, um, is are the positive aspects bigger than the risk or how large is the risk? Well, it depends on how you look and what do you mean uh, larger because when you are <clears throat> when you use AI to basically create a, a surveillance system and to survey an entire nation uh, or entire people uh, when and you are a member of these people uh, when I don't <laughs> I would like you, I, I, I would not be surprised if you want to blow up AI, right? Uh, but on other side, uh, if you are um, um, in, in a country where AI is applied to, to a good cause of a people, right? For example, to, uh, um, to do distant medicine, especially during the time of coronavirus, when uh, it's going to be cheap. Right? It's going to be huge. So it very much depends on how you are going to use AI. Right? You can use AI to very, very destructive way. Yes. And you can also use AI in a, in a way that enlighten and, and raise, raise up the spirit and the economy of the whole country. So that is basically the point of AI, right? And also the point, the point of AI research is we don't quite know what is the end product of AI. But then we have to do two things at the same time. First, first, we have to study how far we can push AI system. And then at the same time, we have to prepare to introduce legislation and regulation to control. But same thing in like genetic uh, reasoning, a genetic uh, research. You yes. can clone humans, but uh, you are forbidden to do that, right? Yes. Uh, so but that did basically. Uh, so could so AI far. make at the end decisions for us? and controlling us? What type of scenario could you envision uh, here? Uh, yes, very, very good question. Yet people often think that AI will control us. Mm. I would say that um, 
um, it's impossible. Why, why we need AI, for example? People are now talking about moon and Mars, right? People talk about going to set a colony in moon and school colony in Mars. Who man cannot go where? Or even if go where, they just hide themselves under the bunker. And when all the job will be done by the, by the robot, and robot has to be very intelligent to survive. So therefore, at the end of the day, if you think about it like this, uh, when the robot, uh, certainly probably much more survivable than humans. Robot can survive everywhere in the universe, not humans. All right, but when, when you say, okay, when maybe a robot will come back and, and kick the human out, that's right, that's quite possible. But the same way we can say, uh, we, can go, we can grow up powerful and kick the God away. But God doesn't allow that. You know why? Because God created a system inside every human to, to, to stop us from do, do bad things. Right? So that's the reason why you look at you at, there, are, there is a guy who, are, who want to become president for 100 years. But when people such a enough, right? But when there is a guy 200 years ago who could become president for 100 years, like Washington, he did only eight years and left. So God created mechanisms inside us that brace us from using our intelligence to harm other people and to harm our race. And we have to do the same thing for AI system. We cannot control that. Okay? We cannot control that in, in, in the way that after behind every AI system, we put a human. That is not possible. And because what do we want to control? We are much more intelligent than we are. In, in the sense of mathematics, in the sense of physics, every AI system can be a professor in physics and mathematics at the same time. Very, very easy in the future. So how right? we can make sure we are still in control of the AI systems and robots and not the other way around? Uh, that means we have to create a mechanism. This mechanism control AI system, the way God created mechanism to control humans, right? And the mechanism God created to control humans, uh, if you are romantic, you call it the heart, right? But if you are more uh, technical, we call it emotional intelligence, right? So basically, we, we, create a, we create a system uh, so that we tell people what to do and what to desire. Our brain doesn't desire things. Our brain may plan to do things, but the desire came from the heart. The desire came from the time when we are small. We are created, we are taught by the parent, we dream that we got our desire for life, the plan for life. And when we grow up, we learn all kinds of things, we become intelligent, and we use our brain to realize this desire and this plan. So in that sense, we are controlled. Our life is controlled by our heart, or better, by the heart of our parent. And we have to do the same thing to the robot. We may be extremely clever, but we also have to educate them in a certain way uh, to create what we call emotional intelligence. Uh, so we, 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 we are like us. That would be another level of AI, which is maybe even more risky. No, not risky. It is, uh, we have to follow the God. God tell us uh, what great human the way uh, we are. And we have to create, we have, to the robot, we are the God. We create it the way God created us. And this is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me ask some more question to Professor Matthew <laughs> on the potential positive impacts of AI. So, in which area or industry or application you see the next, you know, very very big uh, um, uh, 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 yeah, positive application of AI? What you envision here? Yeah, I guess. Um... I mean, there, there's, there are so many areas in which AI has a positive impact. Uh, and, but the, I, I suppose that the, the, the most important area that's going to be really important in the, in, the coming, uh, in the coming next decade or so would be in the area of health and wellness. So, so this is where we can apply technologies to make our own lives more rich, more fulfilling, more, uh, more longer. Uh, and so the, I, think, I think we're on the verge of seeing a lot of advances in AI that apply directly in, in, this, uh, in this space to make people healthier and live, live longer, happier lives. So I think, I think we can say as humans, right, there's nothing, there's nothing that we as, 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 uh, as uh, autonomous beings desire more than just happiness, right? And so, so if, we can, if we can design the systems that will make us healthier, will make us live longer and richer and more fulfilling lives, then, uh, then the, the, the benefits will be incredible. Can you give one example on such a system uh, that could be there in the future? 
Um, well, the, yeah, I mean, the, the, again, the possibilities are limitless. Um, we can start with a simple example that's, that's there right now, which is uh, these, these, uh, you know, uh, these, these exercise watches, right, that, that keep track of something simple as your blood pressure and your heart rate during the day. And from that, extract all kinds of information about the, your progress in terms of developing, uh, you know, athletic skill or whatever. But not only that, but you can also optimize your behavior in order to see that your health is actually improving. So this is technology that's already here today and is, is using, using exactly the kinds of uh, data-driven uh, decision-making technologies that, that, that we were talking about earlier. So that's, that's already here today, right? So then what, what could happen in the, in the future? Well, the, the, the possibilities are limitless, right? The, the ability to replace, uh, re replace parts of the body with intelligent cybernetic systems, right? Uh, that uh, that uh, can um, overcome uh, things like aging, can overcome sickness, uh, and so on. I, I suppose the, 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 ultimate, uh, the ultimate use of uh, technology in this area would be to actually, um, once, the, once the human body is no longer, uh, no longer viable, right, to uh, transform your, uh, your, your what, what do you call it? Your intelligence, your, your spirit, your brain into a machine, right? Uh, and so, but, but then along, along the journey from what we have available now to the possibility of future uploads, right? Of our, of our own uh, personalities, right? There, we're, we're, gonna see, we're gonna see a huge array of, of really exciting advancements and improvement in our, in our uh, health and, and life. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, um, Professor Dong, do you agree with Professor Matthew if uh, AI w w will come to our life in you know health and wellness and will help us there, or what will happen? Well, Professor Daly, my boss. So first, I'm going to <laughs> agree on uh, fifty percent of what he said, uh, at least. Yeah, but on our side, yeah, sure, I, I fully agree with that. Yeah, I fully agree with that. Right? Actually, uh, that's the reason we we hire one one young colleague who work on brain science yes and, uh, and mm. we, we have a plan uh, when we hire him uh, that we are going to set up a program on health uh, on health service i don't know how to call it health service or whatever it is uh, to serve, to, to serve. and especially when you now when you look at the pandemic and you look how the, how the older people are kind of uh, in many ways abandoned in 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 in, 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 in their in their home and their care um, if they are not really abandoned in the sense nobody cares, but they are more abandoned because um, because the infection. So the, the, the people who serve them have to take protection, and therefore they don't get uh, the quality health uh, support anymore. For example, if you are a nurse and you put all of this protection uh, around you, around you, uh, then of course the, the service you give to the old people is going to be <laughs> much more reduced in quality. Yes, and, and, and therefore, uh, when we go, uh, the pandemic is also a kind of occasion to show us that healthcare, healthcare, especially uh, healthcare for the older citizens are extremely important, and um, women alone cannot handle it, especially in a time of crisis. So, could we build an interface that directly link our brain to an artificial intelligence machine and what? What does this mean and what risk could be there? Well, if you ask me, I say no. But if you ask Elon Musk, he would say yes. <laughs> but Elon Musk would, would want to do it only to his, the people who work for him. He would never do it for himself. So if you ask Elon Musk uh, what he thinks about AI uh, for himself, he probably would, would, would agree with me. But if you ask Elon Musk what he thinks about AI for other people, then he will do like you said. I will inject uh, a, a chip into a brain of people and by internet with chip, I will go into increase their memory and their processing speed. And, and, and they're going to be better worker for me. <laughs> so uh, Elon Musk think he is the center of the universe. He invent, he's a trial of forever. <laughs> so we create all kinds of technology. So for other people, they raise and serve him better. So uh, I think that it's possible. But the point that we don't know the, the risk. We don't know the risk, right? And that's the reason why Elon Musk would do it for his worker, not for himself, not for his son, I'm sure. Okay, good. So <laughs> let me ask one more question uh, to each of the panelists. So um, let's assume uh, now we are uh, 10 years into the future, or maybe in 10 years we have the same discussion again and sitting here, you know, 
what would be the hot topic we would discuss about in 10 years of AI? What, what will be achieved? And you know, within these 10 years, maybe something happen on the risk side, you know, what could potentially happen um, after within this 10 years that really shows us the huge risk of artificial intelligence? Maybe I start with Professor Matthew. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I've, I've thought quite a bit about this actually. And uh, I think, I think the, what we're gonna see in the next 10 years is the social unrest due to the disruption in the, in the labor markets. And uh, so this is the biggest, if you, if you think of the next 10 years as the near term, right? Okay, actually there are two. I don't know if uh, Dieter will allow me to do two. But anyway, so the, the first one is the disruption of labor markets. You know, if, if, you, if you chimed in in the morning, we saw lots of optimism uh, on the application of AI technologies, but also this came up time and time again, right? Is that uh, AI, and automation and related technologies are replacing jobs, right? And if you look at Southeast Asia, the projections are that by 2030, actually 50% of the jobs that people are doing today are going to be eliminated by that time. And I really doubt that we're gonna find replacements for all of those jobs, especially if they're in low skill, low skill areas. So what are we going to do? In the West, people are talking about GMI, right? A guaranteed minimum income. Right, that even if you don't have a job, if you cannot find uh, find stable work, that you still, you, you as a as a citizen, you have a right to a livelihood. You have a right to to be able to, uh, you know, find a place to live uh, and, and so on. Um, but then I, I I don't see I don't see any discussion of, uh, of of these kinds of ideas here in Asia. Right. So I, I think this is a huge risk. And, and actually, I do, I do believe that, that a guaranteed minimum income is, the, is, is probably the best solution to, to this problem. So I do have high hope. I, I, I'm an optimist, right? I do have high hope that uh, we'll solve these, uh, solve these problems as they come up and find, find either find meaningful work for everybody or guaranteed income. Then uh, the, the other big, the other big uh, risk is in the area of, uh, of war, right? Uh, so... Um, so I think everybody knows that uh, the, the possibilities for autonomous weapons is, is quite, is quite f fearsome, right? When you talk about uh, automatically controlled weapons, right, of, of mass destruction or even uh, minor destruction, right, uh, but applied at a large scale. So this is another thing that I, I see a lot of, I, I have a lot of optimism here because I believe that we, that as human beings, we, we don't really want to destroy each other. Right, uh, so that we might have some bad, uh, um, some some bad apples in, in 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 our in our society, right? That want to do harm to others, but I, I hope that we'll come together. This, that the possibility of developing these horrible weapons will actually lead us to come together and be more uh, be more peaceful and more cooperative than we have been in the past. So th those would be my two main mm -hmm. okay. points. Thank you. So, uh, Professor Dong, if we sit here in ten years again within these 10 years, what you could envision, what could happen that really demonstrates and uh, you know, showed us the risk that come with artificial intelligence? Well, well I fully agree with Professor Daly. Um, wherever we are going to, but and you know, very depend. Uh, if, if within this 10 years, a lot of the autonomous um, machine, um, may, we may have to delay that. For example, if you, within this 10 years, you really de deploy full time, um, I mean, completely all of it, uh, driverless car, driverless bus, and all of these things. When, uh, um, when the disruption is huge, just imagine in Thailand, um, if all the taxi driver, bus driver are out of job, uh, what is going to happen? In Thailand, you know, the rich country, you cannot really give people enough money to, to survive. And all, even in the West, if you give enough money, people enough money to survive. The pandemic show that uh, stay at home doing nothing mm -hmm. is very detrimental. Uh, so uh, that means it creates uh, it great pressure, uh, and people can get crazy from that. That means uh, in the West you will have a problem of people having money to spend, but uh, they're having to do. I mean, and you know, one of the problem of people is that you don't have, don't have nothing to do when you will take a gun and play with the gun. Uh, that is the problem. But in the East, we will have much bigger problem because we don't have much resources. Uh, so, so instead of getting richer, we may get poorer. We get poorer. So I, I, I don't see much um, benefit uh, for a quick development of AI for 
for people. And also in the East, we have a lot of conflict. You know, in Europe, you've got a lot of conflict, but this conflict is kind of resolved after the Second World War. But uh, the conflict in, in the East is still there. And, and when, one, when one country becomes much more powerful uh, because of AI, but the problem here, when you become more powerful in AI, you can have also a lot of people who have no jobs. And suddenly you have the incentive to lash out, let out for two reasons. First, because you are much more powerful. Second, it's a win. <laughs> you solve a problem for your people. And what happened to other people? Well, if you are defeated, you have to accept whatever you are given. So therefore, I mean, there is very, very disrupted problem, uh, AI, both in the world, right? So do we need laws to control AI? Definitely, definitely. We need law to control AI. You need law to control where you put a camera, all right? Yeah, and what are you going to do with your camera, right? At least the least that you need to do that, right? okay? Because people need to have a privacy space, privacy space, creative freedom of thought, and create no innovation as well. So if when you're starting to control people, you kill innovation, okay? And you turn people into very dangerous creative who, who want to lash out. It's like you keep a person inside a house for, for a long time. When you let the person out, uh, the person becomes irrational. And you it's a look at COVID and why it's so difficult in the West to keep people at home. Because they are kind of have a lot of freedom. They get used to that. Right? And also keep but they are quite rational, I think. It's not true that they don't they don't understand that uh, the mask is not helpful. I think every American understood that the mask is helpful. It's just that they can't accept accept it, but not the, their way of life. The same in Germany, right? You've got demonstration against okay, mask. Come on. Very crazy, right? Right now, very basic. But but we, how how long have we been at home? Three nights. <laughs> but now if you put them three three years at home, what? that is uh, the problem of AI too. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. So um, yeah, but, yeah, with this, I think we uh, come to an end. So it would be very interesting if we sit here in ten years again. Uh, what of those became the truth, and what uh, you know was a to totally wrong prediction or maybe something we haven't predicted at all. So yeah, with this, I want to uh, thank the speakers again, uh, Professor Matthew representing the bright future of AI and uh, Professor Dung, the dark side of AI. Thank uh, you again. And but uh, I pray, I yes. can I make a comment? Yes, please. My comment is that don't blame God, <laughs> right? So God great woman for one purpose. And uh, for example, God great woman and when they got great women, they put the brain inside a hole where no, no, no hole, no blade for you to go to the brain. That basically, and why? Because basically inside that is a security mechanism <laughs> to prevent people from changing their own brain, changing other brain, turn somebody into an animal and etc. And that's the point we had to keep. We have to follow the God and don't try to blame God to our people. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't, blame, don't put a chip into our brain. Uh, I, okay. I can't wait to get my first chip. <laughs> I'll, be the, I'll be the first in line. Yeah, when you, will, you will become semi-God, yes. Uh, but I don't know. But semi-God semi -God live in Olympia, uh, Mount Hay, doesn't live here. So as long as you put a chip in your brain, I think the next day you will leave your body. Go up. It's okay, you are free to do that. Okay, thanks you very much for your uh, views on this. And uh, yeah, on this discussion uh, on the bright side and the dark side of artificial intelligence. So, and with this, uh, we can close. And uh, yeah, uh, greetings from uh, the Asian Institute uh, and the Entrepreneurship Center. Also with this, um, I'm uh, uh, closing this uh, series of AIT uh, Tech Talks on the industry transformation with big data and artificial intelligence. And I thank everybody for their attendance. Thank you.